In this video, we're going to learn about the unique function in C++ that allows us to remove consecutive duplicate elements from a range. So to help us test out this function, we'll create a vector. We'll include vector, and then we'll create the vector itself. So here we'll say vector int data, and we'll give some duplicates in here that are both consecutive and non-consecutive. So we'll say nine, one, one, two, three, three, two, five, twelve, and twelve. So here, one and one, these are consecutive duplicates. Twelve and twelve, these are also consecutive duplicates. Same thing with three and three. But two and two, these are duplicates, but they're not consecutive duplicates. The function will actually remove all but the first occurrence of consecutive duplicates. So in other words, this one would be removed, this three would be removed, as would this 12, but not this two. Let's test this function out. The first thing we'll do is actually output the vector before, as well as the size before, to help us understand how the function actually works. We'll say for auto it is equal to data.begin, and we're gonna store into it an iterator pointing to the beginning of our range, then we'll say iterator doesn't equal data.end. So we're going to stop once we reach the end of the range, and we'll say iterator plus plus to increment the iterator on each iteration of the loop. We'll output each value in our range by dereferencing the iterator here with star it, and we'll separate them by spaces, and we'll also output a new line when we're done. I'm actually gonna output before here. Just to make it clear, this is the before vector. We'll also output the size of the vector too. So we'll say C out before size colon, and we'll output data dot size here as well. And we'll call the unique function by passing in iterators to the beginning and end of our range and the function will return an iterator to the element that follows the last element that was not removed. So in other words, the range between data.begin and this returned iterator will include all the elements in the sequence that were not considered consecutive duplicates. Let's output all the elements between data.begin and this new end element here. We'll say after colon, and we're gonna have the loop go up until new end now. So we'll save this and run it. And if we compare the before elements to the after elements here, the consecutive duplicate elements have been removed. So we only have one three, we only have one one, we only have one twelve. We do still have both twos though because those are not consecutive duplicate elements. So let's actually output the vector size after having applied the unique function so we can see if anything's changed. So we'll output data.size followed by an inline. If we save this and run it, we're going to get an after size of 10. So it's not like the unique function is actually going to reduce the size of our vector it's gonna modify the elements in the range that we've specified if there's consecutive duplicates found. And it's going to return an iterator to the element that follows the last element that was not removed. Let's see what happens when we open the vector in its entirety after having called the unique function. So I'll put the vector again all the way from data.begin to data.end. We'll save this and run it. And we can see these three values from the old version of our vector are still there. We probably want to get rid of these now. So to do that, we could resize our vector. Here we'll say data dot resize and then distance data dot begin and then new end here to shorten our vector down to the elements we're still interested in. And now we'll only print out the entire resize vector after calling unique. So we can save this and run it. 
And now we have a new vector size of seven. And if we output all the elements in our vector, we only have these seven now. And that's probably all we want at this point anyways. We can also optionally provide a function that will return true if two elements are considered equivalent and false otherwise. So for example, we could say bool match int n1 and int n2. And we're gonna have our function return true if n1 is equal to n2. We'll save this. And now we'll pass in this function as a third argument here. Now this function right now isn't doing anything different than the default behavior. So if we save this and run it, we'll get the exact same result as before. We could customize the behavior though. So for example, we could check that both n1 and n2 are less than 10. This would alter the default behavior of the function. It would make it so that elements are only considered consecutive duplicates if both the numbers are less than 10. So if we save and run this, we now get a different behavior here. So in the case of one and three, these are still considered consecutive duplicates. But in the case of 12 here, it's no longer considered a consecutive duplicate. And that's because of our custom function here, which is used by the unique function to determine whether or not two elements are equivalent or not. Now, because I included the vector library here, the algorithm library was automatically included, but the unique function is defined inside the algorithm library. So we should include that here as well. So this is how we can use the unique function in C++ to remove consecutive duplicate elements from a range. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.